Hey everyone, it's Sal again for another Magic Mike moment. And today I'm chatting with Maggie Kelly, who's in Delmar, California. Hi, Maggie. Hi, how are you? Yeah, groovy, thanks. Right, so Maggie is a holistic entrepreneur for peace and a freedom expert. She helps women in transition who feel stressed, anxious and doubtful restore themselves to wholeness. Wow, that sounds awesome. Do you want to tell me a little bit more about that? How you got into it all? Well, a lot of, a lot of the women that come, and men too, who come to see me are in some sort of a transition, which I kind of think most of us are, mm -hmm. filled with stress and anxiety and kind of feeling also a little bit stuck and not mm -hmm. really sure what that next step is going to be. And yeah. I really got into the whole idea was that when uh, my son, who's now 16, was born and has a chronic illness, he has cystic fibrosis, which is a lifetime um, mm -hmm. illness with no cure. Mm -hmm. And um, I felt very much alone in it, but also, what do I do? How do I make it work? Um, how do I manage it all? And then the idea that I might lose him at an early age was also part of my process. Mm -hmm. And I remembered in college that I had read some work done by Deepak Chopra. Mm -hmm. And so I reached for some of those things that I had read then. And I didn't even realize it, but Deepak Chopra has a center for well-being right here about 20 miles from my house. Really? <laughs> started taking courses through Deepak Chopra and really and began to meditate. And I really saw a very significant shift in my perception of what things look like, the pictures I had of what this family was supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. And um, that I didn't have to strive and grasp and and um, just hold on so tightly, and that if I just let go and started to take care more of myself and um, detach myself a little bit from the outcome, mm -hmm. that perhaps things would unfold a little bit better and a little with a little more grace and ease. Because at the time, it, it wasn't graceful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can guarantee you that. I was waiting for the shoe to drop all the time. I was kind of, I always describe mm. myself as having hyperventilated through the day. Mm. Every day was very anxiety producing. Mm. I continued my work with Deepak Chopra and over the past 11 years, I've studied under Deepak and been certified as a med meditation teacher. Right. Um, and then used a lot of what I've learned through him to help others transition a little more gracefully and with the use of meditation and um, personalized coaching. Wow. Wow, that's awesome. You're just making me feel peaceful just talking to you. <laughs> it's like, yeah, because I can relate to that franticness and whatever. So along the way, you must have had quite a few challenges, hurdles and whatever to get to where you're at. Can you share some of those? Well, um, I also have a daughter who... Um, during my time working through Deepak, went through her own difficult time through her teenage years, mm -hmm. um, depression, anxiety, and just kind of that teenage angst mm -hmm. of not really knowing what to do next. So um, it was the perfect test for what I learned and what I needed to learn. Mm -hmm. um, in being able to let her go and send her to treatment and allow her to get the help that she needed that I was not equipped to give her. And it probably was the hardest thing I've ever had to do, let her go at 13 mm -hmm. for two years. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the flip side, when she returned, I mean, this is extraordinary, hardly a child now, she's almost 20. But um, I think if I had held on to her as tightly as I was when she mm -hmm. was in trouble, um, the outcome truly would have been different. And mm -hmm. um, I really attribute what I learned through Deepak Chopra and through all of the other things I studied to my ability to really let go mm -hmm. and just, you know, not feel like I'm the one in charge all the time, that I don't have to mm -hmm. control it all, that I don't mm -hmm. have to, you know, that, that it's not up to me ultimately, you know, plain mm -hmm. and simple. Yeah, that's just awesome. Letting go, you know, that is just, everyone needs that. Everyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. Now, the people that you work with, you know, women in transition, what do you think, um, transition from, yeah, in life, what do you think is the biggest issue facing them, the biggest one? 
I think that most women, I'm in my mid fifties and I think a lot of women my age are transitioning a lot from the kids now going off to college and then feeling mm -hmm. like, well, now what do I do with my life? Yep. Kind of feeling unstable and unsteady in the idea that it, it is actually okay to want something more for your life and it's mm -hmm. okay to go and pursue it. And it's also okay to feel like you don't know what you're doing because you've given up, not given up, but you've traded your career for the most part for yep. raising children, which is a very admirable goal as well. Yeah. But I think that part of what the women that I see are, are missing the idea that we are more than just the roles that we play. Like if I were to ask you, who are you? Mm. Um, most women sort of give me a blank stare like well, yeah. I'm a mom I'm a wife I'm a sister mm. but really we're far more than the roles we play and I think mm. that for a lot of women and men too that I speak to they're just kind of get so stressed that they get trapped into that way of being yeah. and forget that there's a place to reconnect to really who you really are I don't mm -hmm. think that we were put on this earth to just get through the day and get up tomorrow and do it all over again and have Groundhog's Day every day. There's a lot more to each and every one of us that, yeah. you know, who are we really and how, how are we best suited to use our gifts and talents to mm. serve humanity? And really that's what I try to hone in for the people that I work with. And also this question, one of the most powerful questions to ask any of my clients is what are you pretending not to know? Yeah. What is it in your life that you're pretending not to know? Yeah. You know, what is it? Is it that you're pretending that you want more? And you're, that you don't want more? That you're okay with the way it is? I remember putting on a huge facade in my mm -hmm. lifetime. Of, I'm mm -hmm. fine. I don't need anything. I don't need yeah. I got this. I got it handled. Only to realize that I wasn't going to do anything well without some help or without... Um, camaraderie or fellowship mm. so that's one of the biggest things that I've seen with a lot of my clients is yeah. this, having been disconnected from who they really know themselves or mm -hmm. want to be yeah that eternal self yeah yeah that's just awesome you know because you know it's all that quality of life and uh you know getting caught up in the the hustle and bustle of everyday life and you know Life's too short. We've got to make the most yeah. of every moment. Yeah. And that's why I start with meditation, teaching the practice of meditation. Because honestly, if if I can't help them reduce some stress, there's no possibility of being able to actually hear the voice that is inside. Mm -hmm. So if if I can help them become lifetime meditators, the journey in meditation within a few weeks, you'll see shifts in who you are and what's going on, and your awareness will become much far far greater if you can settle your physiology first because yeah. when you settle your physiology your mind settles too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. big time big time i love it so if you could um possibly come up with three top tips to help you know these women um overcome this challenge you know it's well, first is, is usually that idea of reconnection, reconnecting yeah. with your innermost self. And I, I would recommend that people do that through practicing the art of becoming a witness instead mm -hmm. of being uh, a passenger in your life. Mm -hmm. Just stop for a moment. And even if that means just take one of your five senses during the day yeah. and tune into what am I smelling right now? Is it the smell mm -hmm. of brownies cooking? Is it a flower? Is it the ocean breeze? Mm. Um, just tapping into your senses, yep. starting to cultivate the reconnection with the self and also um, just becoming a witness. Mm -hmm. Witnessing as opposed to always having to say something to continue a conversation, always having to be a part of something, just stepping back for a moment and becoming a witness. And then the second, second thing I would recommend is always to renew and restore ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's super important to mm -hmm. reconnect with nature every day. Mm -hmm. I truly believe that it's, you know, if you just sit out, if you only have five minutes, fine, take those five minutes, just sit out on the patio and let the sun 
warm your face yeah or hear the birds singing mm. or listen to the ocean or put your feet in the sand just yeah. a few minutes every single day mm. because that's that's where life is in yeah. nature connecting to the bigger scheme of things mm. and then the third would be to you know as a practice to help awaken is to really start to practice recognizing your mental states as they come up both good and bad yeah so so when i have a state where i start to feel like i'm becoming a little anxious or disturbed to notice that what's mm -hmm. the physiological sensation i have yep. what do i want to say what do i want to do does it make me want to run or eat or you know do something that i otherwise wouldn't do yeah to try and catch begin to recognize those states and then ultimately what ends up happening is that you start to recognize the state as it's arising as opposed to after it's risen yeah. awesome. and acting out. The other side is then to also recognize the good. Mm -hmm. like when when I'm feeling joyful, how do I feel when I'm feeling joyful? I'm kind of excited. I want to do something. I want my friend to come with me. I want someone to, you know, to talk to and share yeah. it with. Yeah. To be able to notice the energy in the good. Mm. Because really, if we don't notice the energy in the good, then when the bad comes, we have no reference point for what good looks like. It's like if you have a toothache, when you go to the dentist and you get that tooth fixed, then you go, oh, it feels so great not to have a toothache. Yeah, yeah. So that's the kind of thing. It's about reconnecting and restoring mm. and renewing and reawakening, really. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome, awesome, awesome. I just love what you're doing. I think it's brilliant. You know, really resonate with all of that. I mean, at the end of the day, this is just wonderful what you're doing. What what would you say you're most passionate about? I'm um, I've always been, you know, even from a really young age, the first word that pops into my head is peace. Mm. And um really what who I who I am is creating world peace one person at Time. Mm. If I can have one person become a lifetime meditator and watch their world unfold in a completely different way, mm. to me that's that's gold. Because mm. I've seen it in myself. I've yep. seen myself go from crazy stressed, shaking my way through a day, living by a list and racing around like a crazy woman, to actually just feeling that I intuitively know how to handle situations that used to baffle me mm. and I intuitively know the most important things that need to happen today and I don't need a big list in the craziness to be okay yeah. and that I'm centered and calm and I don't react instead I respond and yeah. that's the distinction yeah let me write that down <laughs> I mean even chatting to you it's brought over a state of calm and peace within me just chatting to you it's just it's really lovely it's very nurturing too yeah it's great oh Maggie it's like I could speak to you all day it's just just awesome but um I was gonna say um oh if people wanted to get in contact you with you where can I send them um um, I have a website. It's yeah. www.satsang, S A T S A N G, house.com. Mm -hmm. And there's all kinds of information there. Um, satsang in Sanskrit means a community of like minded people coming together in search yeah. of the truth. Yeah. And ultimately, Satsang House will be a retreat house where people can stay for a couple of days and do workshops and retreats. Right. Today we gather and do all kinds of things. Fantastic! It's awesome. Oh, yeah, I just love what you're doing. I really oh love it. I do. <laughs> I do too. You know, in this day and age, it's so crazy, frantic, busy, and you know, we just we forget about ourselves. We forget about what's important. And um, yeah, it's, it's that's why I just think it's just so important what you're doing. You know, getting us to stop and really look within and feel and you know really focus as well mm. Yeah. Mm. anyway it's been lovely chatting with you today absolutely Likewise. Thank you. <laughs> i look forward to chatting with you again a lot more down the track and seeing you know all the other people you're reaching out to and the peace you're bringing and you know it's just awesome so yeah but anyway well thank you very much for today maggie and um we'll, we'll chat again soon and all right sally thanks so much 
Okay, bye. see you later. Bye.